It's April the 2nd, Picks edition of the MLB Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It's brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's US-based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com. That's K-U-T-T dot com. Use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick him for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB and NHL college basketball too. Sign up today. Um, use the promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Welcome, everybody, to the MLB Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. My name is Malcolm Bamford, coming to you from Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. Today is Monday, the 1st of April, and we are here to have a little look around uh, the opening weekend. Uh, see what went down, and we've got 14 games slated for Tuesday the 2nd. Joining me is the biggest April fool of them all. It's Mr. Moonaf Manji. Moonaf, how are you? Certain feeling like a fool after I made the Astros win total my uh, biggest bet of the year, starting 0-4. It only gets swept by the Yankees. Um, But here we are, Mal. It was a fun weekend, actually, uh, MLB, I know. Talk about it here in a minute, but yeah, I think the biggest thing was the Astros. Absolute clunker. I'll, I'll expand a little bit more, but yeah, I'm excited. I uh, forgot you mentioned 14 games. And the best part about MLB season, we talked about that volume, said we get games during the day, makes the day go by faster, Mel. It's the day games tomorrow. What's happening tomorrow? I haven't really checked the times. Uh, uh Tomorrow, maybe we get the Cubs early. Uh, we got a little no, uh, yeah. kind of early one, Twins and Brewers. Yeah, Twins and Brewers is sort of a twilight, uh, twilight game. Um, yeah, that's been a fun weekend, and there's a few teams I'm I'm going to ask you about in a moment. Be enough. Uh, TBDBJ is first in. TBDBJ sent me a personal apology the other day for missing the show, <laughs> um, which is a little bit unnecessary, Trev. I'll be honest. That, that last week, a the first week's a little bit wobbly with the lines, and I'm doing the prem show as well, um, and also. Our it's the one week where your clocks and my clocks are all different. Yeah. Uh, our clocks changed again yesterday, so we're back in another five hour gap. Um, so I'm I'm back to where we should be. But, uh, Trev, don't feel obliged to do that. I did say I expected a note from your mum, so that was fair enough. Um, how was um, Easter weekend, Moon? Have you been out and about? Uh, yeah, we hung out with some friends yesterday, you know, uh, saw the kiddos. It's been a while uh, since we saw everybody. Everybody gets, you know, busy with lives and things like that. But uh, yeah, hung out with my parents during the day, selling you offline that, you know, they went out, tried to go shopping to get some stuff. Lo and behold, <laughs> all the shops were closed. So uh, they came back home within like five minutes of where they wanted to go. So yeah, hung out with them, had lunch with them. And the evening time, we headed over to the park and hung out with the friends. Um, it was a good time. The weather was really nice. It wasn't too hot, but uh, it was a good time. Came back home to watch the uh, Dodgers come back against the Cardinals. But, um, yeah, man, how, how was your weekend? Um, well, I went out on Saturday. I uh, went to the pub on Saturday. And I haven't moved since I came back on Sunday. If anyone watched the Premier League show last night, they'll realise I was doing this in the same clothes. I, I think <laughs> I probably smell a bit, Moonoff. I literally <laughs> haven't moved off my chair for, like, 48 hours. I've got my pyjamas, my slippers. Be stupid football oody on. Um, yeah, and I just haven't moved because the weather's been horrible. It's been cold and wet and miserable. And then if mm. you go and do something with the kids that's indoors, it's gonna cost you about 300 quid. So I've just left oh, them boy. do what they want. Um I did uh there's a there's a Premier League bet in here, Moonaf, because I gave my tickets away on Saturday. Well, I swapped them, and um, so I missed the four three comeback of an right. amazing win for Newcastle. Yeah. Exactly. And I swapped my tickets for a game tomorrow night. So that definitely Newcastle are going to get beat. Or it's going to be a nil-nil draw. So if you listen to this show and you like a Premier League bet, I've absolutely mushed myself by missing one of the all-time classics, uh, swapping my ticket for a game that we're going to get beat tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, that didn't go very well. Um, talking about teams then, you mentioned New York and Houston, Moon. I think on the Premier League show, me and Barry will often do it. Eye catchers from... The weekend, well, 
this is a really good show to do it on because yeah. it was the culmination of the first series. Now, Lonty and Dylan handicapped the first games of the second series already, but a lot of those games haven't gone off and the, the other games haven't finished. So I think the teams to focus on are either the teams that swept or the teams that were swept. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned um, New York Yankees in Houston. Uh, what was your take on any of that? So uh, if you took a look at the first three games of that series between the Yankees and the Astros, Astros, are actually, Astros actually got out to, they were leading, at, I want to say, at the at least end of the fifth inning or going into the sixth inning after the starters got pulled. And the bullpen pretty much blew it up in the first three games. Um, which was disappointing to see, right? And uh, I'm a little bitter, right? Because I did have the money on the Astros in the first game and in the second game. Um, but it's just a repeat of what we saw last year, right? Now we talked about it during the preview shows as well, that this team struggled at the juice box for whatever reason last year. And that's kind of carried over this season going 0-4 to start the season. Am I worried? No. But I mean, I think you got to give a lot of credit to the Yankees. And I think that Juan Soto, if he continues to play the way that he has, to start these first four games for the Yankees, I think that he might just run away with the MVP. I mean, no, it was only the first weekend. Yeah. But you could just kind of tell, Mel, that he's a huge difference maker for this Yankees lineup because, number one, pitchers are afraid to throw him the ball. I mean, we know that he can hit it 600 feet if he wants to, but he also has clutch hitting that he can hit for average and all that good stuff. So if you're a Yankees fan and, you know, you're just hoping that he stays healthy because he – he, at, at, at a point, I feel like if he continues to play that the way he does now, that he might just turn into a minus favorite for the AL MVP sooner rather than later. And for the Astros, I mean, am I pushing the panic button? No, but it's it's telling that your bullpen gave up the lead in the first three games of the, of the series there. So it's unfortunate that you couldn't get one there. But again, we'll keep an eye on this Astros team. But again, give a lot of credit to the Yankees. They just came out and played well and just ripped the hearts out of the Astros in the first uh, uh, series of this weekend. Yeah, it's certainly nothing to worry about. It's just one of those weird things that you get the first weekend. There were a couple of things I'd notes I'd made about the Yankees. First one was Soto, um, mm -hmm. which you mentioned. And he just seems to have, oh, you know, all the greats just seem to have that little bit more time than everybody else. Yeah. It just seems a little bit more effortless. And he's left hand He's lefty. Yeah, he's lefty. And yeah. they, in, when cricketers, left-handed cricketers, left-handed batsmen, just have that elegance. There's something about the a, a little fluency about them, really yeah. good to watch, really easy on the eye. And Soto's got that in absolute bucketfuls. And the other thing I noticed, and in fact, I, I don't know if it was... I, I saw this... Um, I saw somebody tweet this out. I can't remember who it was. But just a, a Sunday night, the lineup for the Yankees, um, because they won three games, so the series was locked up. They then had a getaway game um, no off day on a Sunday night, and they could easily arrested. That's where normally they would have arrested like Stanton and some of the almost like the load management guys and got yeah. John Bertie in the game. And they didn't, New York just thought, Do you know what? Come on. And they rolled out that A star lineup again. And it just struck me as a little, uh, maybe the Yankees had locked in a little bit more. And that's that is a tiny little thing. Um, again. Miami swept uh, in Pittsburgh. This was only mentionable because uh, on one of the preseason shows, one of Scott's best bets was Miami to have a losing streak of over six games at some point in the season. This yeah. might be the earliest we ever win one of our... Um, I know Noah loved it. I cast the Baltimore overs total in like August a couple of years ago. Yeah. So that's the record Scott's got to beat. Scott might have this beaten by Wednesday um, because Pittsburgh rolled Miami over four times. Uh, the Mets still in covered pretty much last night. <laughs> he was on suicide watch. Um, oh boy, Trevor. We like we we didn't mind them. Um, the Brewers, or certainly I didn't mind the Brewers when we previewed them. I thought they would go over eighty uh, in even money, and they've had a good start as well. Although it has been a a soft start at the Mets, and then the other two really were the the Tigers and the White Sox, uh, and not much to say there. I'm currently sweating. I found a great bet tonight, Moonaf. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I think I'm probably going to end up mushing myself. I probably shouldn't say this live, but the game's just gone into weather delay. And it was the Braves White Sox games, uh, which was the Braves to win with under 11 and a half runs, was even money. Um, and it was horrible weather. I just, 11 and a half was a, a lot to get to almost by yourself. So it's currently 6 nothing in the eighth. 
And it just looked like it jumped off the page when I found that bet. So that's on one British site who were doing these kind of alt run lines. I um, mean, you can tag Atlander on too. So yeah, fingers crossed I can uh, I can get that one in the book as well. Uh, Captain Sano's joined us in the chat. Ryan's in there as well. Hey, good evening, gents. How are we doing? Um, right, okay. So tomorrow's games, we've got the majority of the lines, I think. Um, occasionally, it's quite good. I don't mind um, handicapping a slate of MLB games without the lines, especially this early on, because it kind of it tells me where my instinct is, if I was miles out or if I was on the right line. Um, so I, I've handicapped a lot of the games without the lines. You've then given me uh, the lines in the last 10 minutes or so. So, yeah, not far away, Muna. Uh, we'll start handicapping once I've told you first about Cut, uh, peer-to-peer social betting platform. That's US based and available in 40 states. Peer to peer social betting, a new and better way to bet. Bet directly against your friends or other users on sport, politics, pop culture. Create your own bets. That's the most fun thing to do on there. Uh, find a bet, get someone to take your odds, become the bookie. Cut handles the payment side of things, social features, cashback. Um, download Cut today in the App Store or over at cut.com. That's K U T T. Promo code SGPN. For a 10% deposit bonus. And Underdog Fantasy, the easiest and the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Just pick your players, higher or lower, between two and five players on any of the props available. All the sports are on there. Um, you can win up to 100 times your money in a single game by just being right. That's all you have to do. Uh, sign up today with the promo code SGPN. Get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as the instant pick em special. And visit underdogfantasy.com. Find them in the App Store. Don't forget to register with our promo code SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Must be 80 or over. Present this day where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. If you're concerned with your play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Right then. So we will start at 410 Tomorrow, which is the Minnesota Twins and the unbeaten Milwaukee Brewers. Um, the Twins have Louis Varland uh, going to the mound. The Brewers have Jacob Junis taking the ball. Um, the lines here, it, it's a match. It's minus 110 each of two with a total of eight and a half. Um, and what made me laugh most about this moon off was in handicapping the games a few hours ago without the lines... Um, I'll tell you where I got to in the end. So, um, firstly, we got the, I never got to tout this, we got the uh, Cheerio stolen base on opening day, which I gave out at six to one, but the game was cancelled. So we had to wait for the day after. And then sure enough, I can't remember who it was, but someone did tweet me uh, saying they'd got six to one, which was a mad price. He was leading off as well. Um, I thought he might steal a, a bag batting nine, but then they put him at the top of the order. Um, so, yeah, Jackson Cheerio or stolen base pop was great. Um, Louis Varland has been a bit of a, a fantasy darling for years. Um, he's always a sort of SP6, and sometimes he's in the rotation, sometimes he's not. He started 10 games last year. Um, he's all right, four and three, 463 ERA. I think he needs a third pitch, maybe. Um, Jacob Junis for the Brewers. Um, over, He's come over from the Giants. 3.87 ERA last year. None of this inspired strong feelings for me, either team or either pitcher. And what sort of made me giggle at the prices, Munaf, um, I've written my last note here is, I'll take whichever team is the bigger price. And then the lines have come out and the minus 110 each or two. So it tells me my instinct was kind of right. I was looking for a plus 120. I'll take whichever team's plus 120. Neither team were plus 120. So at this point, I'm a little bit stuck, Moon off. Um, the Brewers have got momentum. Momentum is real. We'll take the Brewers uh, for Trev at minus 110, Moon off. Yeah, I, I had the same sentiments as you did for this game. Um, Want to see what Varland can do now that he is going to be a starter for this Twins team. At least it seems like. Uh, but give credit to the Brewers or what they were able to do going up against the Mets. Uh, I mean, even though it was the Mets, but this was a team that I was down on coming into the season. And maybe it seems like they figured some things out on offense. So I'll be curious to see if they're able to keep that consistent throughout the regular season or the Brewers. Um, but yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll take the home team here at even money price. Um, yeah, like you mentioned, there was 
really hard to differentiate these two pitchers. But again, I'll just take the home dog in this price, even though it's at around even money right now. It's moving towards that way. Yeah, it was. Um, let's see, it'll be it'll be lower down um, on my list of of things to bet. I think tomorrow. Uh, the next game is a six thirty five Eastern first pitch between the Kansas City Royals and the Baltimore Orioles. Alec Marsh uh, starts for Kansas City, and left-handed pitcher Cole Irvin. Goes for Baltimore, plus 140 on the Royals, minus 175 for the O's. Totals eight and a half, Munaf. Yeah, Alec Marsh last season, um, not very good for the Royals. Uh, I think that put it lightly. Uh, trying to pull up his numbers here. I don't know why this always defaults the batting, but three and nine last yeah, year. Alec Marsh's numbers, why well, it does default to batting. He's never picked a bat up in his life. Are you yeah. looking at stat menu? Yeah, I don't it's understand why he does that. Let's have a look at his batting figures that don't exist yet. Yeah, I had that all day. I can't to change it. It's getting on my tits. <laughs> Sorry. We might have to let uh, Stat Muse know that, hey, you guys need to change the default on these pitchers. But oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't very good last year for him, right? I mean, like 3-9 and nine with a 5.67 ERA. Um, sorry, it's 5.69 ERA. Uh, eight starts last year for this team. And he just wasn't very good overall. I mean, there's no way to, for me to put it better from at home. 6.59 ERA, 5.17 on the road. And I say all that to say that I am on the Orioles here. Again, there's just going to be a wagon at home. I mean, I noticed Cole Irvine going up against this Royals team uh, for this upcoming uh, game. But last year, he was very underwhelming as well. One and four with a 4.42 ERA. Um, do I think that the Royals can get a couple runs off of him? Sure. Uh, but I, I think I think this is going to be a game where I believe we do see runs here, Mal. So I'm leaning towards the Orioles on the money line, but I will be playing the over eight and a half here in this game. Um, yeah, Alec Marsh's numbers aren't great, but I'm not entirely sure why, but I like him. I, re I remember liking him, and I can't remember what it was that made me do that. I think this, hopefully I'll be watching him this year and watching him get better, and he has earned this spot in the starting rotation. But, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens tomorrow. Um, Cole Irvin's just very middling. Doesn't, he was a swing man um, in 2023, appeared in 24 games, um, started in 12 of them. 4.42 ERA, I think, is exactly who Cole Irvin is. His ERA will be that again this year. They're, both sides had a weird weekend in terms of run production. Kansas City had a slow start and then an explosion of 10 against Minnesota. Uh, Baltimore had the opposite. They had two double-figure games and were then held to one by Reed Detmers, by one of our guys, Reed Detmers, um, last night. Um, so I like the over moon off just because it gives us all the possibilities. So you've got the possibility of um, a bad start from either pitcher, which is very, very possible. You've got the possibility of an explosion from either offense, which we've seen over the weekend, or a combo of both. So anything in that ballpark happens uh, and we'll get the over eight and a half runs moon off. So I'm happy with that. Next is a 6-4 Eastern first pitch between the Cincinnati Reds and the Philadelphia Phillies. Another one of our guys. In fact, this is your guy, moon off, Graham Ashcraft, who will go for the Cincinnati Reds. And Spencer Turnbull uh, draws the start for Philadelphia. Um, plus 115 on the Reds, minus 140 for the Phillies. And the total here is set at nine. Um, so, yeah, game, Graham Ash Ashcraft is one of those names who did get a lot of air uh, last year. Um, and last night, like, he, he really was up and down like a bright night last year. His April ERA was 2.1. Um, mm -hmm. His May ERA was 9.2. And in June, it was 10.3. And then you get back to July and August, where it was 184 and 303. So he was carrying an injury, and you could see his numbers went off uh, off the cliff while he was carrying that injury. Then they brought him back, and he was fine again. So he's very, very capable. Um, and on the road as well, he was fine. 368 um, in 11 games started on the road. Spencer Turnbull is a bit of a funny one. He only started seven games last year for Detroit, but did come up with a 726 ERA. Um, so I think these two, with these two pitches, um, the Cincinnati hit 20 runs uh, in three games at the weekend. Philly did have a tough start against Atlanta, 
but this isn't a great spot. I'm just not sure about Turnbull. I'm going to take Cincinnati. Um, they got away with it last night. They did two home runs, actually, uh, walk off. They, they levelled it up with a two-run shot, and then Encarnacion Strand hit a single off uh, Kyle Finnegan, and they walked it off. I'm just not convinced by Turnbull, and I think Ashcraft is absolutely fine. Um, Philly didn't do... Didn't pull up many trees at the beginning. I think Cincinnati are a nice price moving up for a dog. Plus 115. Yeah, I think that you take a look at Spencer Turnbull last year. And, I mean, you mentioned it, right? 7.26 ERA. He had a lot at least two earned runs uh, in every single startup sec for one. Uh, he didn't make it to the sixth inning in any of his uh, starts last season. So I think that he's capable of giving up. And some runs here, obviously, to the red. So if you want to look at a red's first five team total over or even a first five over for this game, I don't hate that. I'm curious to see what Graham Ashcraft looks like coming into this season. Hope, I mean, hoping that he is healthy because, like you mentioned there, Mal, that you nailed it, that after he came back from the injury, that he was really solid to close out the season uh, for this Reds team. He did have one start last year against the Phillies which was a pretty solid six shutout innings. Uh, he only allowed four hits in that span. Did have four walks in that game. So I think the is something that I want to see this season from um, Graham Ashcraft is that if he's able to really locate his, his pitches and command his pitches because he did have 52 walks last year, uh, compared that to 111 strikeouts last season. So those are the things I'm kind of looking at for Graham Ashcraft here. So I say all that to take uh, the plus money price here with you, Mal, on this pl- I think especially at this number around plus 125 right now on the Reds. Um, I, this could be another game where I do see runs being scored. So if you want to take a look at the first five, like I mentioned, Reds team total over or just the first five over, I think both uh, guys can give up a couple runs here each. So um, Reds money line and then also first five over for me. Okay, so a team ride on the Reds as an underdog. 6-4 Eastern first pitch. It's the LA Angels at the Miami Marlins. Two lefties going here uh, in Tyler Anderson for the Angels and Jesus Lazardo is back for the Marlins. Plus 120 for Los Angeles, minus 150 for Miami. Total set at eight, Muna. Yeah, we have uh, Jesus Lazardo who pitched a great outing um, in this last, or I should say his first start. Uh, against the Pirates. And Pirates are a team that, you know, weren't very good against left-handed pitching. Uh, Angels, uh, they were kind of middling as far as left-handed pitching last year, number 14 as far as team batting average. WRC Plus, they were 13, so slightly above league average last year as far as uh, left hand, going up against left-handed pitching. Uh, 21, 23.3 strikeout percentage as a team against left-handed pitching. The key again for Jesus Lazardo is always it is that can he get through those first that first inning, their first two innings? Because after that, he really does settle in. And he, I think he had what nine strikeouts, if I'm not mistaken, eight strikeouts uh in his first start against the um eight the, it was, yeah. Yeah, against the Pirates, right? So I think he was able to settle in a little bit. He did give up a home run. I believe it was to Brian uh Reynolds in that game, if I'm not mistaken, which was a two-run home run. But other than that, it was absolutely fantastic. And then the bullpen, you know, gave it up for himself. So I think if you're going to bet on this Marlins team anytime this year, Mal, it has to be within its first five innings because, again, this bullpen, we saw it multiple times throughout the series against the Pirates that they coughed up leads and they, they cost them all four games. So Tyler Anderson, I haven't really been a fan of. I mean, when he was with the Dodgers a couple seasons ago, he was great. But other than that, last year, six and six with a 5.43 ERA. Uh, on the road, it was only two and four and 13 starts out of 5.93 ERA. So not very good for him. So I say all that. Uh, I'll take the Marlins here. Uh, first five innings with Jesus Lazardo uh, starting for this Marlins team. Yeah, minus 150 is not actually a terrible price. Um, maybe yeah. a, a parlay uh, price if you wanted to put it in with something. I'm happy to watch Tyler Anderson tomorrow until we see something. 5.93 road ERA last year tells you that you don't want to get involved pretty much. And like you say, Lazardo pitched really well. Uh, only two hits um, in that game, one of them being that two-run dinger uh, by Brian and Reynolds. I mean, the Angels gave up 24 runs in the first two games, um, but then did get a nice win, like I say, behind that Reed Depper start, Miami 0-4. But the Angels have struck out 35 times in three games, and as a team are hitting 179. Um, mm-hmm. 
So I like Miami, but I like this Lizardo OK prop again, Munaf. I don't know what it'll be. Uh, might be as high as seven and a half. I doubt it, though. Maybe six and a half. I don't know if, if you can see anything. Um, oh, shout out. But other than that, the Angels strike out uh, and Lizardo can strike them out. So that's where I'll be leaning. I'll be having a look at uh, Jesus Lizardo. Um, My guess would probably be six and a half uh, for it again. Yeah. Uh, and if he gets over it, I think we'll probably see that adjustment. Either the the juice getting adjusted, or maybe they bump it up to seven and a half. And we move on. Once we talk about Hall of Fame bets, win bigger by betting smarter this NBA season with Hall of Fame bets, the sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research NBA and soccer bets with historical stats and data. Put your parlay ideas into Hall of Fame bets, revolutionary parlay optimizer, and you will get hit rates broken down by a leg. You'll get expected probabilities. You can sort players by hit rate and find all the value, who's hot and where the value is, etc. Uh, stop betting in the dark. Join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent, data driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hfbets.com. Use code SGPN. To get 50% off your first month today, start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. Uh, 650 Eastern first pitches, the Texas Rangers at the Tampa Bay Rays. Left-handed pitcher Andrew Heaney for Texas. And it will be Zach Eflin uh, starting for the Tampa Bay Rays. Plus 120 for Texas, minus 150 for Tampa with a total of eight and a half. And we start with Zach Eflin here. Um, he started on opening day against the Blue Jays. And the line is really ugly at first glance. But I actually think he, he pitched okay. Um, he gave up a solo shot to Springer in the through five innings. That was it. One solo homer um, through five innings pitched. But then he got tagged for two more in the sixth. Um, so it was unfortunate. Um, six earned runs, but on six hits and a walk. So I think that line's a little bit harsh on, on Zach Eflin. So I'm, I'm perfectly happy to give him another chance here. He only gave up 19 homers all last year in 177 innings. So giving up three and six is very much out of character here. He'll be fine. Um, Heaney on uh, season debut here, 10 and six last year, 4.15 ERA. Didn't start well last year. Um, two and two thirds and seven earned runs against Baltimore. So there might be a slow start, I think, going on. He had a 4.29 road ERA um, and one game started against Tampa with a 5.40 ERA. So I just prefer Tampa Bay here. Um, settled into this home stand as well. The bat should be uh, should just be settling a little, a little bit more. Again, I made these notes before I saw the lines moving off. So minus 150 is just on the edge of what I, I was hoping maybe for minus 130 or something. Uh, but yeah, we'll take the minus 150. Um, Tampa Bay Ray is moving off. Yeah, last season, um, the Tampa Bay Rays were one of the better teams against left-handed pitching. And now you have a starting pitcher for the um, Texas Rangers and Andrew Haney was a left-handed pitcher, right? So, uh, yeah, I think you're right. That, that, that This should be uh, a bounce-back spot for uh, Zach Elfin, who was absolutely fantastic in Tropic in a field last year for this Rays team. Um, Texas, again, they what, what, got two out of three over the weekend against the Cubs. Um, so it's gonna be a fun series to watch. I'm actually uh, really interested to see how the 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 Rays do respond here. But I do like the Rays in this spot. Uh, if their team total to go over in this game, I just think they can continue having success success against left-handed pitching uh in Andrew Haney, who I just haven't really been a fan of. Uh he's had spots where he's looked pretty good. I mean, he was 10 and 6 last year, but um, I think his downfall last year was actually on the road, despite him having a uh, three and three record. He did have a 4.29 ERA. I want to say he did not. Uh, he did face the Rays one time last season. Five innings. He allowed four hits, four runs. Three three of them were earned runs, and he did allow one home run with two walks. So, uh, yeah, I'll take the Rays here. Rays team total over as well. Okay, next game on the slate is a 7-10 Eastern first pitch. The Detroit Tigers at the New York Mets. And Ellie said Larry Mize. Do you remember Larry Mize? Wasn't he like a 70-year-old golfer? Uh, it's probably even before your time, Moonaf. It's not Larry Mize pitching for the Detroit Tigers. Um, although, if he did, he could probably get through seven innings against this Mets lineup, no problem. <laughs> Casey Mize will go for the Tigers. And um, Adrian Hauser uh, takes the ball for the New York Mets. Plus 115 on Detroit, 
minus 140 uh, for the Mets with a total of eight, Munaf. Yeah, Casey Mize, uh, one of our guys that we talked a lot about when the first season we started doing this podcast with Tarek Skubal. So uh, I'm excited for this uh, this um, Tigers team, right? I think this is Casey Mize's first start this season, if I'm not, or this is his second start uh, this season. Got off to a little bit of a rough That's start. Uh, it's first start, right? Yeah, because he didn't pitch last year because he had the injury. Um, and then, yeah, so, yeah, he hasn't pitched since 2022, which I'm seeing. So, It'll be interesting to see how he responds coming back from the injury here. So, um, again, do you trust this Mets team? Is the first question to put up any type of runs. I sure don't because, again, it's something similar to what we – and I compare this to the to do to New York teams because for years over the past couple of seasons, we saw the Yankees were a team that just wanted to go out there and hit bombs and just hit balls over the fence. It doesn't work that way in baseball. Like you got to have guys that can hit for average, and they have those guys now do the – Yankees and it's paid dividends for them, right? Juan Soto is a guy that can hit for average in power. For the Mets team, they just want to go up there and just hack and, and just you know either it's a strikeout or it's, it's it, or it's a home run for this team. Um, so I don't I don't believe in this offense right now. Um, Casey Mize I think is definitely the better pitcher here of these two. Uh, and I say all that, so I'm going to take the plus money price here on the Tigers at plus 105. I just need to see it from the Mets before I can start backing this team. So. Uh, give me the Detroit Tigers with Casey Mize, plus 105. Yeah, if anyone gave me $100 and forced me to bet, there's no way you can take the Mets at all. Um, so, yeah, Mize, he's, he's, like I said, we haven't seen him for a long time. All of his kind of underlying metrics are okay. Nothing really stands out, good or bad. His XARA is quite high, moon off, um, but we'll just see how that pans out, and he does draw a nice start here against the Mets. Um, Hauser is very much steady, Eddie. Um, eight and four with a 4-12 ERA for the Brewers last year. Both offences are not going at all, though. Um, the Mets lost three games, scoring eight runs at the weekend. The Tigers won three games, scoring 11 runs in the same period, so it's a fine margin. Um, and we've seen in the northeast, even tonight watching... Uh, the White Sox game and the Chicago game. Um, it's cold and it's damp and it's bleak and nothing looks like going over. I'm happy to take the bullpens out of this. So, like I say, House will be fine and we like Mize. Um, I'm going to take a first five under, but the full game under uh, looks like a good bet as well. So, yeah, we'll keep it low scoring um, at the Mets tomorrow. 7.40 Eastern first pitch. It's the second game in a series that's already started tonight. The Cubs leading the Rockies comfortably. 5 or 6 nothing maybe last time I looked. Um, Kyle Freeland, left-handed pitcher, uh, makes his second start of the season for the Rockies. And Javier Assad uh, goes for the Cubs. Plus 165 on Colorado. Uh, minus 200 on the Cubbies. Uh, there is no total, as per usual. Um. I haven't got much on this game at all, Moon. After this is one of the last games that I saw um, priced up. Um, I like Assad. I like Javier Assad a lot. Bit of a swing man, worked out the bullpen uh, most of the time. But I like his stuff. I think he'll go okay. Um, Kyle Freeland, you just can't trust Sitting with a 38, 57 ERA through one game. But the thing that stands out is when you do get a total, just how difficult scoring was. Um, today in this Cubs White Sox game, um, I'm just going to catch up with the live score in here. Is it finished? It might have been, you know, it's five, yeah, it's five finished nothing five finished. nothing. And I tell you what, the first I don't know if you saw the first three runs. Um, yeah, the first three runs all came it, so it was scoreless halfway through six, and it was a Christopher Morell inside the park three run homer, um, where the outfielder just overran him. Ball that was rolling along the grass. He just ran past it, had to chase it all the way back to the wall, and everyone scored. So that was easily no runs. It should have been no runs through six. Um, so the, t the total will be seven, seven and a half. I don't see the weather being any different tomorrow. I've had a little look, although there'll be people who know better than me. But it just looks like a horrible low scoring game. And the Cubs will win 4 1 or something again. It's the same game. We've just seen it. The same thing will happen tomorrow, Moon. They're, they're doing the work for us. It's dead easy. Yeah, it's Cubs red line for me. I mean, I'm just going to continue fading this Rockies team on the road. Uh, they won. I think they won, obviously, one 
against the Diamondbacks over the weekend. But other than that, it's just, I mean, I don't think they can hit very well on the road. Kyle Freeland looked out a shell of himself in that first game. Uh, who was coming off a great spring training uh, was he, but when he, you know, the lights turn on, you know, it, it just didn't work out for him when he gave up, or the, at least to say the Diamondbacks scored 14 runs in that third inning in that first start for uh, Kyle Freeland and Zach Gallen. So, um, yeah, give me the Cubs run line here. I, I, I'm just going to continue fading this, um, you know, this Rockies team. Like you mentioned, Javier Assad was really solid at Wrigley Field last year for this uh, pitching rotation. So Cubs run line for me. Uh, I think you're right. Something similar to what we see, maybe a 4-1-5-1 type of victory here for the Cubbies. I just remembered what I was supposed to ask you, Munaf. Um, who have you taken in the MLB Survivor? It's a bit, I've never played MLB Survivor before, so I'm trying to feel my way through it. Um, I made my pick. Who have you gone for? Because it's we're locked in now, so you can you can reveal your pick. I had the same team as you picked. Oh, did you? You yeah. took the hometown Boston Red Sox, did you? Yeah, I think everybody's going to start picking the uh, or the team that's facing the ace at least game. early in the I, season. It makes sense, was, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much my MO. It was the A's and the Angels. like Because obviously, I was going along alphabetically, and Boston were about fourth along the list of 30. But you say the Angels, A's and the Angels, and you didn't have to go any further. I like stop, stop at B. B for Boston, lock them in. Yes. <laughs> um, well, Captain Insano is in the chat. Who did you go, Captain? Oh, he's gone with the yeah uh, Red Sox as well. Yeah. So all the yeah, uh, the entire brains trust is on the Boston Red Sox this week. Watch them go zero and six. Um, seven forty <laughs> Eastern first pitch. The Atlanta Braves at the Chicago White Sox. Uh, Ronaldo Lopez for Atlanta, and left-handed pitcher Garrett Crochet for the White Sox. Atlanta minus two eighteen. Uh, the White Sox plus 180. Um, this is good. Yeah, Moonoff, you go first here. Yeah. Braves run line next. Oh, really? Wow. I mean, so I, this is a conversation that I was looking or uh, when I was handicapping the games here this morning, uh, or sorry, last night for the Monday card. And I saw James Paxton on the, on the, um, the Dodgers starting right for for the Monday night yeah. game, and he was a north of a minus two hundred favorite. And I asked myself, well, does this guy warrant to be a minus two hundred favorite? And I said, absolutely not. But the thing about it is, is that he has one of the best lineups that can back him up. So if he gives up three to four runs in the first couple innings, his offense could go out there and give him five, six, seven runs just because of that how prolific that offense is. And I think that's the same case. For Ronaldo Lopez, um, and if I'm not mistaken, I know, well, I know you don't believe in revenge spots because this is Ronaldo Lopez going up against his former team in the White Sox. Um, but look, he was pretty good last year, right? I mean, despite the record at three and seven when he was with the White Sox and the Nationals last year, two of the worst teams last year, um, he had a respectable 3.27 ERA. Now, it's, now your mentality kind of changes when you go to a winning ball club. Uh, being with a team like the Atlanta Braves. And again, we see it today that they're already up 6 nothing. I know they're in a rain delay. But if you can go out there and give this team three, four innings, and the, I think the offense can take care of the rest for him um, in this game. I understand the pitcher for the White Sox in his opening start had a great game. But again, like you mentioned, it was against the Tigers who only scored 11 runs in that entire series. So, um I think the contrarian play obviously is going to be the White Sox in this game, but I, I, this Braves lineup just rakes, man. It's, it, I just got to continue riding the train of the Braves on the run line. Uh, so I'll take the Braves here run line. It, it's, it's square, it's chalky, but it's been winning more times than at least thus far this season. Well, I'm going to go a little bit the other way here, moving off. Um, Crochet did pitch well against Detroit. Um, and he gets another turn at home here for five hits, one earned run with eight strikeouts. Now, Ronaldo Lopez, 68 appearances last year, um, but no starts. Um, did win the job in spring, fair enough. But we handicapped this similarly with AJ Puck the other day, and I was quite keen on him um, going, making the transition. And Scott faded the hell out of him, and Scott was right. Um, AJ Puck walked six, and it all went wrong. Now, I get Miami on Atlanta. Um, but if you take the bullpens out of it, Muna, Especially the the weather looks horrible. It's going to be low scoring. Um, 
we, are, but we just talked about the Cubs game, a mistake, an error is the only difference between those two teams. Uh, so I'm going to give the White Sox a chance on the first five. And by the way, that nine is far too big as well. Um, again, if Crochet can go okay, um, mm. in the weather, we've just watched this game tonight. Um, I told you I backed the, the Braves to win with under 11. That might even be another good play again tomorrow. Um, but I'll take the White Sox on the first five, but I do like the under as well. Uh, next up is... Uh, eight tennis in first pitch, the Toronto Blue Jays at the Houston Astros. Uh, Jose Barrios for Toronto and left-handed pitcher Framba Valdez uh, draws the start for Houston. Plus 130 on the Blue Jays, minus 155 on the Astros. Total is at uh, eight and a half. Um, Barrios pitched to Gem opening day at Tampa Bay. Six innings uh, allowed six hits, two earned runs. Uh, with six strikeouts, Valdez didn't. Uh, four and two thirds, five hits, three earned runs, and key figure here, Munaf walked six batters. Um, <laughs> I just I watched a bit of Houston last night. I watched Alvarez go all for five. Um, I watched Bregman go all for four. That was against the Yankees on Sunday night. Um, so Houston at all for four. So until either Houston show me something or Valdez shows me something until they've shown me that they've figured it out. And the Blue Jays at plus 130 is an excellent price, Moon Um they've been playing well. And even if Houston were doing a little bit better, there's not much between these two teams either. It's not like you took Houston taking on Kansas City or St. Louis. The Blue Jays are legit. So this is a fair price for them to be taking on Houston who were playing well, let alone this Houston that haven't shown me they've figured it out yet, moving up. Uh, so I'll take the Blue Jays at plus 130, please. Yeah, I'm just doing some quick math here. So between Jordan Alvarez, Alex Bregman, and Jose Abreu, the, those three guys combined are, let's see here, two, five, five for 43 to start the season, Mal. Five for 43 yep. between those three guys. So that's not going to get it done for this Astros team. Um, I've sworn off betting on this Astros team at home until I see them turn it around. Now, on the road, it's a different story for this team for whatever the reason is. But Jose Barrios, like you mentioned, not only did he have a stellar start uh, in his first game uh, this season, or his first start, I should say, this season for the Blue Jays, but he's actually been pretty good against the Astros since he joined the Blue Jays back in the 2022 season. Um, two and one with a 2.41 ERA. They obviously has won two out of his three starts. So I think that's something that you can carry over, like you mentioned from Framber Valdez. I mean, the six walks were a little bit concerning. Um, or the five walks are a little bit whatever six walks uh he had against the Yankees. But I mean, it's it seems like this Astros team, I don't know if like I don't want to say it's fatigue or I don't know what it is right now. They're just kind of in this funk, for lack of better words, especially at home. So I think you got to continue taking the plus price here until I see this Astros team turn around at Minute Maid Park. Uh, I got to continue taking up the, the road teams that come visit them. So I'll take the uh, Blue Jays in this game here with you. Um, yeah, Captain Sano thinks the other way. The, the Yankees made some good defensive plays. Sure. And so, yeah. Yeah. But, but that's that is the, that's their job, by the way. Um, but, but yeah, Captain Sano quite likes the Astros. But going back to the Braves White Sox rod. Uh, Rod Batero is very confident that the Braves are just going to smash the daylights out of the White Sox. Yeah. Um, and if we're sitting here when they've won all three games 10 to nothing, Rod, we'll probably be scratching our heads thinking, do you know what? <laughs> In hindsight, it's kind of obvious. So I think you're probably right. Um, 9 40 Eastern first pitch. The Boston Red Sox at the Oakland Athletics. Brian Bello for Boston. Um, and Alex Wood, um, left handed pitcher, goes for Oakland. Uh, minus 155 Boston. Plus 130, Oakland, total of seven and a half, Muna. Yeah, Brian Bello, your guy is on the mound here for yeah. the Red Sox oh, going up against the A's. Had a uh, really good outing against the Seattle Mariners in his first start. Uh, five innings, did allow five hits, two earned runs. Not really a strikeout guy. I think that's something that he needs to add to his arsenal, especially for a team uh, like Seattle that strike out, uh, strikes out a lot. Uh, but he got the job done. And all the Alex Wood, on the other hand, um, I think he was he the I believe he was the opening day starter for this team. Yeah, um, he was right. Yeah, so you know a lot of times when we're handicapping these games, especially early on, we're looking at last year's numbers and how these teams are doing against right-handed pitching, left-handed pitching, and 
uh, you and I were sitting here talking about the uh, Guardians and how bad they were against left-handed pitching, and I, that's why I had picked the A's on the first day. So I'm glad I got that out of my system uh, of picking the A's. But um, Alex Wood just was absolutely atrocious. Three and a third, seven hits, six earned runs uh, in that game. He gave up to the um, uh, to the uh, Guardians in that game. And now you're going to the Red Sox team that – surprisingly you know split the series against the mariners so i do expect them to come into the uh, in this uh game against oakland and take care of business i think brian bellow will go along well here uh maybe strikeouts number go up a little bit maybe a, a buy low spot on his strikeouts but uh it's either red sox full game or, or the red sox first five either way you attack it i think they take care of business against this uh against this ace team uh the live inshore mush is well and truly on moon off i've done it to myself uh, Austin Riley three run homer. Oh boy, puts the Braves up to nine. So I've got a couple of um, no, I've got the under. Captain Sino thinks I've got the over. I've got the under, under 11 and a half with Atlanta to win. Uh, so I'm still live, but um, I've just turned the telly back over, uh, because that game was in weather delay. Yeah, um, I took Boston on the run line here, Moon off, just because what else can you do? Minus 155 is a little bit skinny. Um, and Brian Bello did what we hoped he would do. Uh, so let's hope he can keep it going here. Um, so there was a few different options, which was the, the Oakland team total under, the Boston team total over. Um, but I just didn't need to overcomplicate it. I think Boston would be more than a run and a half better than Oakland in this situation. Um, so, yeah, Boston on the run line uh, is my uh, my play here. Next up, 940 Eastern first pitch, possibly the pitching matchup of the uh, day, this one. Cleveland Guardians and Seattle Mariners. Um, Shane Bieber for the Guardians, Lewis Castillo for the Mariners. Plus 110 on Cleveland, minus 130 on Seattle, total is seven. Um, my actual pick here is under, um, but again, or really, what I, I picked a low scoring game um, because I hadn't seen the lines. Now, seven just makes me pump the brakes a little bit. Um, Bieber sent down Oakland uh, in his. Uh, opening day start, but we didn't learn much in that situation because it was Oakland. Uh, Cleveland did score some runs, um, 29 runs, again it's Oakland, but it can't hurt to get your eye in, kind of three, almost three live um, extra spring training games. Seattle settled into the pattern, which we really expected when we talked about this preseason, is that they were the projected lowest game totals in all of MLB, they were had really good pitching depth, um, so we didn't expect them to give up many. But also, we didn't expect them to score many, and they've uh, only scored 10 and let up 14 through the first four games. Um, Cleveland have just about always been an under-team moon up in the four years we've sat here and done this. Cleveland unders has been a running thread. Um, the seven scares me a little bit. Shot around for a seven and a half. And it'll land on seven. If I have to take seven, I'll take the push. So I'll stick with it, Moonaf. Um, I'll take the under seven, uh, Cleveland at Seattle. I uh, yeah, I really like what I saw from Shane Bieber in his first start against the A's. I mean, how much can we take away from that? But again, he was a he was it was a fantastic outing, right? Double digit strikeouts in that game uh, against the A's. Eleven strikeouts in one walk. He pitched six innings, allowed only four hits. So um, I did put a little bit down on Shane Bieber to win Cy Young. Uh, for this upcoming season. Um, but again, I want to see how he does against some of the better competition. I think that starts in this game against the um, against the Mariners. And Luis Castillo didn't get off to the greatest start uh, in his first uh, game against the Red Sox. Um, and another guy that I did have a Cy Young ticket on, but he gave up four earned runs in just five innings and six hits. So I think this is a good bounce back spot for him. Like you mentioned, uh, Seattle, they play in a ballpark at T-Mobile where... It's it's a pitcher friendly uh, ballpark. Guardians are a team that again are a usually an under team, and again, I I I try to ignore the stats when you know teams play against like the Rockies and the A's, just because again we know that they're not going to be very good ball cl uh, clubs. But I think for this uh, for this game, you're right that if you're able to find a seven and a half or maybe wait. Uh, this number may get the seven and a half. I do like the under, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the Guardians here, man. I like Shane Bieber. I like that plus money price uh, with Shane Bieber. But yeah, I agree with you 100% on the under. Uh, TVDBG co-signs that moon off Cleveland. Um, and he likes um, Bieber to record the win 
um, in that one as well, just Trev. Next up, 9.40 Eastern first pitch, the St. Louis Cardinals at the San Diego Padres. The Lizard King, Miles Mikolas for the Cardinals and for the Padres, it will be you, Darvish. Plus 120 on the cards, minus 140 the Padres. Total of eight, Moonaf. Yeah, uh, you, Darvish, he is just so difficult to figure out, Mal, sometimes. Um, yeah. There, there's times where he just looks like, you know, he. I mean, I don't want to call him Cy Young pitcher, but Cy Young worthy maybe is a better uh, terminology for it. He had a, he's had pretty two pretty great outings to start the season here. Um, can I trust those two starts? Yeah, sure. Um, really good against the Giants. Five innings. He only got a one earned run. Did have seven strikeouts in that game against the Dodgers in you know the game that they had that first game in uh, Seoul, South Korea. Three and two thirds. Only allowed two hits. Did have three walks in that game. But again, um, a pretty good start for him as well. So when he's at home at Petco Park, I can trust it. I think that um, that's the time that I do want to back him. Uh, so if you want to take a look at the run line here for um, you, Darvish, and the Padres, it might be a nice, nice plus price. And, and again, I know that you're more than likely going to be fading the Cardinals here because you're down on them this upcoming season. Uh, but Miles Mikolas, when he's your opening day starter, man, you and I talked about this last week, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yes, I know it goes to the Dodgers, but... The Padres' offense isn't as bad. Uh, I mean, it's not as great as the Dodgers, but they're, I think they're still an above-average offense when the the guys that they do have in that lineup. So I think the Padres are going to get a couple of runs off of him. I'm going to go with Darvish at home on the money line here. If you want, The run line price is not out yet, but I'm sure you could get a really nice plus price at the run line for minus one and a half on the Padres here. Yeah, you're right. Darvish is kind of unreliable, and the Padres are kind of unreliable. But I think there's a way into this where we don't, have to rely upon them. Um, you can take um, Darvish out of the equation just by concentrating on Mikolas. And it's I'm not just beating the same drum again. Um, the Cards took one game from the Dodgers over the weekend, and they probably take that. There's not a, that's not a terrible result for them. And actually, they played all right. Uh, they were in quite a lot of the games. They lost the um, they lost the lead last night. I think actually lost the game five four late. Uh, so they could have come away with a split. But really, it's the presence of Miles Mikolas played on opening day, and we were immediately into the Dodgers team total. He's just far, far, far too hittable. Seven hits and two walks um, on that occasion, and five earned runs. He just hasn't got the stuff to put batters away, so the ball's going to be in play a lot, and this is going to suit the Padres. So I didn't look any further than a Padres team total. I'm guessing, Moonaf, it'll be four and a half with the game total at eight, yes? Yeah, Moonaf's yeah. nodding, so yeah. Uh, over four and a half, San Diego Padres team total. Next is the penultimate game. I was very proud of Lonte last night, Moonaf. He uh, he used the penultimate game. He didn't know I was watching the show. Dylan and uh, Lonte were doing the show, and Lonte pulled out the penultimate. Uh, so well done to you, Lonte. He's... Uh, He's in my good books. 9.40 Eastern first pitch. Uh, how about those New York Yankees take on the Arizona Diamondbacks? Uh, nasty Nesta Cortez, left-handed pitcher for the Yankees. And it's Zach Gallen for the D-backs. Um, plus 105 for the Yankees. Minus 125 for the Snakes. Total is eight and a half. First thing I've got written down here is Soto is great. Uh, but we talked about that earlier on, so we don't need to elaborate on that. Uh, Cortez did okay eventually against Houston last week. Um, he gave up four earned runs pretty early on the first two innings. Um, but he did settle down after that. Um, I'm neither in nor out on Cortez at the moment. Um, Zach Gallen was great, albeit against Colorado. What we actually gave out last week for Gallen was... Um, Kind of the workhorse props. I gave out the outs and I gave out the keys. But that was the game where they scored 14 runs in the second inning. Um, so Gallen didn't really have to go any further. I don't know if that had much to do with it. They could almost use it as another kind of ramping up exercise. And they pulled him after five innings uh, with only three strikeouts. So it was, probably wasn't a great example of what Gallen can do here. Um, New York have struck out a lot uh, 42 times in these first four games as well. Um, I'm going to take the D-backs here. I think rolling along a tone behind Gallen, I'm going to take Arizona to win at minus 125 
And I'll go back to the Gallon K props. Like I say, I don't think that was a great example last week. Um, he would have had to sit still for about 35 minutes while they were scoring 14 runs in that second inning, which won't have helped either. Um, so, yeah, main pick is uh, Arizona to win. But let's go back to the Gallon K props, which I'm guessing is six and a half again, maybe a little bit lower, Muna. Uh, yeah, I'll probably guess around like five and a half. Yeah. Uh, range for this game, but it, it's Zach Gallon at home, right? And um, yeah, I want to see how the Yankees respond coming off of the series against the Astros because Astros have been a team that have pretty much owned them, at least in the postseason, right? And um, I think it was really confidence boosting. Maybe they're coming off of a high against you know sweeping the Astros in four games, but again, it's a Juan Soto effect that we talked about, right? And uh, this help this lineup is healthy right now. They had a, I know they had a light, uh, late scratches in the game against the Astros uh, on Sunday, but I mean, they're healthy. I know they're missing DJ LeMayhew still, but it's Zach Gallon at home. And like I mentioned, it's it's beating on the same drum. Uh, it's automatic uh, play for me. So I think that he can have a really good game here against the Yankees, despite how hot they have been. And the Yankees didn't score like that many runs in that series again. Uh, against the Astros, right? Right now, I mean, it was like, what, three, four? I mean, the most they scored yeah. was five going into extra innings. So I think that, again, Zach Gallon, if you want to look at him in the first five on the run line, I think that's an opportunity, but I think full game, the Diamondback can't take care of business here. So, uh, yeah, give me Zach Gallon all day, anytime that he's at home. And rolling the tar back on, this is going to be the longest sweat. I've been going about six hours now, Braves, White Sox. Um, final game here, 10-10, Cowboy time, first pitch. San Francisco Giants, LA Dodgers. The Giants are officially TBD. If I had a pound for every time I said that last season, Munaf, I would have about 150 quid. Um, all year long, the Giants, and they're back at it again already. I think it's Logan Webb. Um, my little uh, sniffing around has got me as far as Logan Webb. Uh, and Tyler Glasnow um, is confirmed for the Dodgers. Uh, but no lines moving up as a result of all of that. So I don't know if you know a little bit more than me about this. Otherwise, um, what have you got on Giants-Dodgers? Yeah, it should be the opening day starters here because we're starting to see those names, same names pop yeah. up when we did opening day. So, yeah, you're probably right. It should be Logan Webb. But I do see uh, Tyler Glass now for this um, Dodgers uh, pitching start. So, uh, Glass now, uh, I mean, you're hoping and praying that he stays healthy because he's gotten off to a, a pretty good start here. Uh, he's only allowed a total of three earned runs in 11 innings that he has pitched against the Padres and the St. Louis Cardinals. Had a really great outing against the Cardinals. Six innings, only allowed one earned run, which was a home run and uh, two hits uh, in that game. Um, Logan Webb, again, he he's a Cy Young favorite for a reason, right? And he's been absolutely fantastic throughout his career. Um, just want to see how he's done against the Dodgers, though. Um, so since 2022 against the Dodgers, he's had six appearances, two and three with a 4.24 ERA. This may be the game now that it may go under the total. I know we don't have official lines here, but I think that Logan Webb, if he's able to obviously contain the top three guys in that lineup, which is, again, a very tall order to ask to do that, uh, I think Glass now can go along okay. If you look at a Giants team total under, uh, I really do trust Tyler Glass now. Um, so I think I would go full game under. I'll still lean the, uh, to the Dodgers way here, a full game as well. But depending on what the number comes out, if it is an eight and a half, I will look at the under in this game between these two squads, or at least a Giants team total under. I enjoyed the Giants Padres series. It was a good competitive series uh, game, sort of swinging both ways. So I haven't learned too much about the Giants. I was kind of out on them uh, preseason, but maybe I think that might be one of the quickest turnarounds. I'm, I might get back in on them, but I'll have to see because a couple of the uh, the new signings look okay. And I, I might have been wrong on the Giants, but I'll be watching them. So, yeah, I didn't have anything on this moon after because I didn't have a picture um, and no lines at all. But, the, yeah, the Dodgers rolling at home with Glass now. They're going to be hard to oppose. Um, the total will be low um, as well. It's a, it's a great looking game and maybe a watching brief. So, yeah, I got nothing on, on this one, moon after. Um and that is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, got all 15 games in the books. Uh, Moonaf, locks and dogs, have you uh, have you made your decisions yet? Uh, I think I have. Um, oh, go on then, because I haven't, so you can go first. Okay, I'll lead it off here. Uh, so for my lock, there's no run lines out yet, which... which uh, 
I feel like we would get some yeah. nice plus price on those on those numbers here. So nothing official yet, but um, and I don't want to give out a run line that we don't have a number for. So for my lock, I th- I'll go with the Padres. <laughs> I know it's a minus 140 price, and we kind of had that cutoff around the minus 140, minus 150 price, but um, I, I think it, it's I think this number should be bigger in favor of the Padres. Um, would it be surprised come Tuesday afternoon that this number is around minus 160 for the Padres? But right now, it's currently sitting at minus 142 on DraftKings. I like what I've seen from Hugh Darvish in his first two starts. Um, and he's at home in Petco Park. And again, Miles Mikolas' resume speaks for himself. So, Give me the Padres here on the money line as my lock for my dog. Um, this is where it gets tricky because I really do like, you know what? Give me Graham Ashcraft and the Reds um, going into Philadelphia. I- I'm going to back my guy here. I don't like what I've seen for uh, Spencer Turnbull. Um, Ashcraft, he should be healthy. He is healthy. And what we saw when he was healthy last season for this team, he can go out there and pitch a really good ball game. So give me the Reds on the money line, plus 120 against the Philadelphia Phillies. Now you've made me think here, Munaf, because we've very nearly got the same lock and the same dog. I'm, I'm going to take my lock from the same game as yours, but I'm just going to take the Padres team total. Um, on If they win this game, they're going to score five runs. They'll win it five to two, six to two, something like that. So let's take the Padres um, team total. And my dog... I quite like Toronto, but the people in the chat didn't. Um, and they're a bit shrewd. Uh, they're, they're shrewder than me. So I will veer away from the Blue Jays. I then wrote down Cincinnati as a small puppy moon off. Um, but you've uh, beaten me to that as well. So um, I'm going to go for Kansas City. Um, Alec Marsh, his numbers are horrible. But I like him. He's going to be all right, you know. Uh, Cole Irving doesn't blow my skirt up. Kansas City, plus 140. Uh, hopefully it'll be a run fest. Uh, but I think Kansas City um, are live in that one at the Orioles tomorrow. So I'll take uh, KC at plus 140. Munaf, done and dusted. Um, anything else you want to talk about before we let the people go? No, I think we pretty much covered the bases. Um, it was a fun opening weekend. Now we have a full week of uh, baseball betting, so it's going to be a lot of fun again. Just a reminder: it's it's a marathon; it's not a sprint for the baseball season. You got to you know pick and choose your spots, and you know you don't have to bet on every single game. But I do like uh, that we have baseball back. Baseball during the day should be a lot of fun. Uh, so definitely looking forward to the season. Yeah, brilliant! Thanks, Moon. That was fun as always. Um, the streams will be scheduled as normal, so keep your eyes peeled for when they go out. Um, the, the roster's been set this week, so we're here all week. Um, thanks, everybody, on the chat. As always, it makes the show a gazillion times better. Uh, so if you haven't yet, like, rate, review, uh, thumbs up, five stars, tell a friend and all that jazz. Um, good luck with your bets tonight and tomorrow. Uh, we'll be back same time tomorrow. Until then, we will see you down the road. Cheers.